Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Monday again, Garfield's favorite day of the week. And here we are. Today, I'm a 3D model for you, a hummingbird feeder. So here we go. This right here, <coughs> excuse me. If you click the link in the description below, this very scene here with these two guides you can have. There's a couple more guides in the folder too. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> now, actually, before I delete that, first thing I want to do is kind of make sure they're the same size. This one here looks a little bit... Well, actually, no, I guess I went for the inner circle there. We're okay. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now, this main shape right here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to go over here and grab this tool right here, the spline pen. Make this thing full screen. <clears throat> right here at about the center of this thing. I'm going to place a point. Now I like to plot these points like this. Others are going to want to go like this and do this kind of a tool. Whatever whatever floats your boat. I prefer just to kind of go like this though. Okay, if you want to have like a line like this, you kind of just put three points close together. One, two, three. That's going to make that going around. And then it comes down here and there's a little bit of a lip. Like this. Boom. And there. And it shoots all the way over to here. One, two. <coughs> One, two, three. Boom. Like that. And then here, this is going to kind of, you so you kind of have to Take your best guess at it, like that. Now, this is going to go back up right here, somewhere. Actually, you may see my finger here was covering it a little bit. I think it's actually a little bit straighter. I'm just going to go like this. One, two, three. Come into here and go one, two, three. And then this probably goes up to... This entire thing is probably hollow, right? So let's uh, I'm gonna go like this. One, two, three right there. And then this is going to be the thickness of the glass. I'm going to try to kind of make this the same going up. Like that. Like that. That'll probably do it. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Switch this to B-spline right there. That makes it nice and smooth interpolation between all those points, like in contrast to say linear, which is just the direct fire between points, super straight line. But B spline thinks of the point before and after the point and in kind of in, does a sort of a smooth, if you will, thinking of the three points and it just goes around the whole thing. That's why I always put three points close together if I want a, a, uh, a hard edge. Okay, now some things you know are flat, so I just usually go in before and I, I, I know I'm never going to nail that perfect, so I'll go in something like this. And I'm looking at here and I'm thinking, well, maybe that doesn't want to be, so I'll just take these ones and flatten those. Now you can do that two ways. You can go to your scale tool like this, hold the red one there because you want to scale it this way. If you look up in the corner, the red one's X. Hold down shift and go to zero. Didn't change. They're pretty much straight, so I did pretty good when I made them. They changed a little bit. Another way to do it is you click this coordinate manager. You're in point mode up here, and then you go to X right here, and you can see there's a point one six two. Hit zero. That does the same thing. So let's uh, take these guys. Uh, actually, not him. There we go. Go to the X. Boink. Just that little bit. Same thing like with this one, you know, looks pretty close, but it's actually at point two one nine three. Zero that out. This little guy here. Boom. And I already got those. Yep. And these guys are important. And they're on there. Now this also wants to be at zero. That's at zero because when we bring this tool in, the lathe tool, that's already defaulted at zero. So you want to make sure you kept those points at zero. And that's the whole point of having the guide lined up um, 
to the zero there. And this, so the zero is in the center. All right. Let's see here. So I'll take that, drop it underneath that. To make a child of something, whatever that thing is, you know, the sins of the father fall on the child there. So everything that this thing's going to do is going to affect anything underneath it. Uh, let's see. Boom. There we go. If, if you don't like how it's kind of subdivided, you can crank that up. I'm always going in here and turning these three things off. The, uh, the axes, horizon, work plane, because I like to just see it in empty space like that. Now, if I go here, crank this up, 32, so if you, like, double it, 64, you're going to notice you're going to get some nice smooth edges there. And then when you when you come back like this, you can't even tell anyway, really. Okay, so now i going to punch those holes in it, and then I think we're done. So, we got the hole punched in it, and it's got this little lip thing here. So what I'll do is make a cloner, because I want to make four of them. Go up here and grab this little donut guy. It's called a Taurus. Boom. And then what I like to do with these is just um, group this guy right here so he's got a null like that. And then that keeps it centered with this guy. I'll make a radial, and I'll just turn the radial down. Traditionally, you do this radial thing by going like that. But what I'll do is just put it underneath a null, and then I'll just move the thing out manual, like this. And then I've got more control, traditional Cinema 4D control. I don't have to go through and manipulate the object using this little guy's transforms in here. I just put a null in it, then I can just use the regular Cinema uh, technique here, which I'm comf which I'm typically working on all the time, you know, so it's more natural for me. So let's see, I'll go like this. Boom. Check it out here in 3D. I got five of them. I only want four. So I'll correct that here with uh, the count. <coughs> Bring that down to four. And then let's see if I got the size about right. Not really. So you can change that here. If you go into object mode, you get these little handles. And you can change the size of the radius. You can change this. So what I'm going to do right now is just rotate my guide, because I'm kind of guessing, but I can actually put this right underneath that. So I'll go to the back tab in the Attribute Manager after I just clicked View, Configure. That's on all these windows here, every single window you can do it. The 3D window uh, is a little different, but you can still do it. It's just odd, you're rotating around, but the background won't. Okay, let's see. So this here, rotate this, right? So you do it right here, like so. That looks pretty close. Something like that. All right, now I can like kind of move this into position a little bit better. Like so, I can make it a little bit fatter. And I'm just looking at the guide up here. Eh, it looks about right. Now I know that it wants to be kind of half in this thing. So, just kind of eyeballing this right here. Like so. So, I'll bring this down like that. Boom. Okay. Now, let's see. Traditionally, I would go and I would make the volume builder tool and I'd merge these together, use some cylinders to punch the holes out. But I'm going to try to do that differently now that I'm in version 26. Um, I'm just going to use the Boolean tool, and then at the end I'm going to use the remesher and hope that I can just put a hypernerve on it. It looks great. That's been my experience so far. <coughs> it's much better <coughs> for everybody out there in 3D land with that we now have this remesher tool in Cinema 4D. So here we go. First step would be to the Boolean, right? Now here's the two things I want to put together, these guys. And I want to make a union. Is that the correct way to do it? I think. Now I'm going to do a connector. Pick uh, Shift C. I'm going to Mac here. I'm going to go connect. Grab that guy. It's a connector. And then drag that underneath like that. Now, this might be a good time to see my scene. I like to show. And I'm just going to take a look in here. I'm just kind of curious to see if this has deleted the uh, torus on the inside here. Yeah, it did. Great. Okay, that's what I was hoping for. All right, so now this is what I was talking about. Traditionally, you get these really kind of weird looking. Um, the mesh here where it's this mesh here doesn't line up with this mesh really um, I don't know it might help the computer if I turn this guy down I'm not quite sure see I got it on 32 <clears throat> I'm thinking what if I go to 12 
And I'm ready to go. Oh, right, right there, going around. Let's make that even less. Eight. Well, no, let's go back to 12. Pipe segments. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that helps. I, I don't really know, but just load that, lower that down a little bit because I'm, I'm going to hypernerve it later. Now, the same thing might be true with this guy. I had that to 64 to look good. Let's go back down to 32. That guy. Okay. So there we go. Got that. They don't really line up. Now I'm going to try this remesher tool. Save the scene. Remesher, where are you? Okay. Drop it under. See how it's defaulted to that Z remesher? That's the new thing. Boom. I'm thinking about it down the corner there. Just like the volume builder would have thought about something, right? <clears throat> and look at that. Now, if I put this underneath a hypernerb, right? I, I just took that, well, however it spit it out like that. I'm going to go with it, right? Put this underneath this. Take a look at it like this. So there's a little thing down there in the corner. Then it's going to remesh and look at that. A beautiful looking mesh. And I, I didn't even go into the um, volume builder tool. The volume builder tool kind of sucks because you're slowing the computer down while it's on. So this has been a slow transition for me. It's, it's great to understand the way the volume builder tool works though. And it's a very powerful tool and I still will use it um, for different things, but this looks really great to me for here. So now let me see if I can go and, um, I'm just gonna current state all this to an object. You know, what I gotta do is punch holes in there, but to, to me, I, I've got the fast way I'm thinking of in my mind is rather than adding like a cylinder into the Boolean, cutting it out, which I could do. So I'll just save this incremental. In case what I do doesn't work out. But what I was thinking was just go here, current state this to an object, and delete. You know, because all the other people in all the other programs, they're not going to have the remesh, connect, and the boolean, and the cloner. That's just exclusive to Cinema 4D. They might all have their own ability to do it. But once I export out of here, and I'm going to go 3D Studio Max, and I'm going to go FBX and all that, but what they really are going to care about is this mesh. And that's the great improvement for this new Cinema 4D. So now I'll just take this and I'm gonna grab these guys right here. And delete them. There we go, easy as that. Okay. Oh, we've got the top piece there. Okay, so now I've got to load in a couple more guides. We'll color this uh, at the end there. So I'm just going to go here. Call that the top cover. <clears throat> now, I'm going to reset this guide up. Configure. got to get, get rid of that. Let's bring that back to zero. And then we're going to load in another piece. So what do we got here? We've got this guy. And this guy. Let's see. Why don't we go for this bottom bowl piece here? Uh, this would be. I guess we put that in the front view here. Now I'm just going to rotate this. Kind of like that. Scale it down a bit. You go here in the zero, tens, hundreds, and it changes the speed at which it does this. Okay. Let's down around here. Just kind of lining it up. It's not going to be perfect anyway, but uh, let's make that shut that off now. Okay, now let's make this thing. So it's got the solid bottom here. And then it's got this top piece here, right? So let's see, I'm gonna grab my spline tool. I've gotta to be in object mode to get that going. Grab that, go down here, and instead of going where this is, you just kind of go from over here and shoot your eye over like that. And then go. Three points together, tweet, tweet. And then we'll come up here. Let's say like that. Well, I'm thinking this has like a little ridge. Not quite sure, but I'm just gonna put it in there. Oh, 
oh, it's on the inside, I think, is what's going on. Okay. Okay, we'll go up to about here, there, one, two, three. And then shoot this over here. And then that that's that shape I think I was seeing in there. Boom. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm gonna slap it with my one, two, three there. There we go. What to do? Uh, something like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and uh, straighten everything out. Oh, yeah. That B spline. Like this. And these. Zero those out in the Y. Boom. Oops. Did that do anything? Didn't look like it. Okay. Make these guys room out in the X. This guy here, yeah, what the heck, let's do it. Oops. Wrong axes there. Boom. 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 Ba -da -doo, ba -da -doo. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Cleaning this up. Let's see. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, I think it's close enough for government work. Oh, right here. So you grab those two, zero them out, and then back up over this one, and zero that out too, so it's in the, the center there. Now, revolve, or leave, like that, and then let's take a look at it with the top. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to put all that, group it, hide it, onto the next, which is these pieces that hold these. So let's just dump this here in the side view, all right? I always will screw this up. Uh, it was a mild form of dyslexia or whatever the heck it is, but pretty much every single time I'll have this thing screwed up and lined up backwards by default. So I'm looking at this, right? And I think that the right side of the screen is the front, um, right? But I'm looking at it from the right, so I might be seeing it wrong. Maybe they're saying, like, I'm on the right and the left is the front. But my brain will always screw that up, always. So, I just kind of will flip it if I if it gets screwed up. <laughs> That's kind of how I rely on it. I just don't even think about it really. I just I just create. I just run into the problem, smash into it, and then I go, okay, I'll fix that. Per so here we go. This to this, like that. And then I don't know if I did. Did I do a top? I probably did a top view. Let me see. Yep, there's a top view. Put that up there. All right, now I just got to pick. I pick this big one here. I'm gonna grab a I'll grab a torus, right? Like that. And then I'm just going to rotate it like this, holding down shift there so it snaps to that 90. Um, there's a Lex Friedman joke about a 270. It's the same thing as a 90, but I've yet to really be able to tell that joke. But nobody ever does really the 270, right? You always think 90. Yeah, rotate at 90, but 270 is the same thing. I'm still working on that joke. Give me a couple years here. Um, actually, I did write a joke once if you want to hear it. Um, this is the joke I came up with. <laughs> what did the fart say to the turd? If anybody's watching, I'll give you a second. Post a little comment down there if you want to make a guess. <laughs> I don't really know who's watching. The punchline is, move over. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that joke there. I don't know how you copyright a joke. Maybe you can't, but if I hear somebody else say it one day, it'd be really cool. All right, let's see. Do, 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 Boom. Rotate this guy. Figure. So you got to change the scale because my my guide's too big. I've matched this one here. Well, I kind of need to rotate this guy too, but let's do that first. So here we go. Like so. Move this now. I didn't move the torus. I did move that. So that's a bad mistake. You don't really want to move the, the object. Keep the object always zeroed out. And uh, 
Move your guide. So here we go. I guess I was blabbing. Move this up and down like this. You can get into the tens, twenties, whatever, hundred space, and it'll move faster. See here now I want to do fine tune, so I move the cursor over. That looks pretty good. Same thing up here. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, decent. Go over here, hit configure. Scale wants to be way smaller, right? 400. Moving it down. And move it over, rotate it a little bit. Doink, doink. Well, there we go. Then this guy, configure. Oops. No. A little rotation on it. Bring that down to 300. Maybe wants to be more than that. And the rotation's a little bit cacked. There we go. Maybe a little bit bigger. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Let's go for that. Okay, now. Let's make this piece right here and we'll find out if my head screwed on right. Because uh, usually this is wrong, so we'll see if this points in the wrong direction for me. See, now in my mind, I'm coming around in the front of the thing. But what does the computer's mind say? Um, let's see here. That's where I gotta turn this back on. World axes, okay, right? Now, which way is which? World axes. So the Z is going back that way. Yeah, completely, completely backwards. See. So isn't that funny? So I don't know. I'm just gonna flip it around after. We go like this. Boom, boom, boom. B spline. Like that. And I'll just rotate it like this, knowing that it's gotta go the other way. All right, and then to get the thickness, you just go up here and grab a circle, go to here and grab sweep, put the two underneath each other, and then take this and scale it down. Looking at the guide here, looks kind of weird, so I'm gonna go in here and say, what axes are you thinking about? And the answer, huh, it's weird. Parallel movement, no, it's not in banking. Parallel movement and banking. Um, let's see here. Why is that having such a problem for me? Maybe it was because of the way that I just... If you're watching, I scaled that. Right here, when I did this move. That was like a scale thing. Maybe that was a bad idea. I'm going to go in here and rotate it. I might have... Uh, scrambled it up there a little bit when I did that. Okay, so let's try it again. Circle. Sweep. Boop, boop, boom. Boom. Scale that down. Okay, it's still looking a little funky. Think it out that easy. So, what's going on? Here we go. Boom. And boom. It was in the uh, circle attributes. I was looking around in the sweep, but wrong place to look. Now you want to get that little point in the front to look uh, less Windowsy and more Apple. <laughs> Just go like this. Put a cap on it. Put a bevel. There's the curve, the roundness, like that. Put a couple more subdivisions, maybe. Well, watch out for that guy sticking through. Like this. And hey, why is that not centered? We'll select all these points here. Center them. Cent now I feel centered. Chakras all aligned. Kiss my aura. Okay. 32, 64. Boom. Make that a little smoother. Now let's go in here. Take this guy. Gazootight out there. Sink him like this. Copy, paste, rotate. Like this. Gonna go down. 
going down, 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 down. It's going to be... It's going to be... Uh, you know what I do sometimes with this? I'll just go in here, I'll take what was the ring radius, the pipe radius, like there, I'll copy it, put in the clipboard. Then I'll just scale the thing, even though I know that it's getting like the wrong size. And then copy, paste it again, scale it down again. Now this one's ring size is small, you know, because we're scaling it down. But I'll just take the two, paste that pipe radius back in, boink. Okay, now it looks like there's got to be something holding these together, right? The way that I took the photo, it's kind of obscured by clouds. It's a, I'm just going to run a little thing through here. We'll connect it here, and then we'll connect it. Um, geez, where would that one be? Connected? I guess just go straight through. Okay, so I'm going to grab a spline like this. Right over here. Spline tool, make sure you're in object mode. And we'll just go from here, do, 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 like that. And then I want to, you see, I can see the point up here. As I'm down here, I can see like a little point right there that tells me, oh, yeah, I want to go to about there. Boop, boop. And then I'm going to go up to here, turn this over to V spline. Select everything, kind of see all my points real quick. Like that, zero it out. Like this. Boom. Boom, ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -ba -da -ba -da boom, boom, Okay, same old deal here. Let's take this guy here, copy, paste him, recycle that. Just get rid of here, get rid of that. Boom, look at that. Maybe it wants to be a little bit thicker, man. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. We'll go a little bit. You know, I have that in my clipboard, so the same pipe radius. Let's paste that right in. Now, it looks a little funky up there. So, you know. Maybe it would want to be a little bit smaller. Or, or um, just take the caps off. Boink, boink. Yeah, it looks a little funny. Hey, but you know what? We could try that tool again. So let's see. The magical miracle tool that fixes anything, the remesher. I bet it would fix this. Right, you know, i got to get in the habit of thinking about it more. Something like that. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -bo -bo -do 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 over here, let's bring this back a little bit. Okay, something like that. Now let's symmetry tool this up right here. Do, 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 do. Drop that underneath that. Boing. Now we got it on both sides. And you know what? I'm just gonna make that a little bit smaller. I don't like how it's the same size. I'm gonna go like that. Yeah. Let me just double check this thickness on this guy. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh look, the top is flat. Oh, good catch. Go up here and let's bring that down. Uh, we'll go for a little bit. We'll go for a little bit more. Okay. I don't even know if I need a cap on that end. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> there. I just want to select the next adjacent point. Go like that. Oops. Grow your selection, but let's see. I think I just gonna move it all. Like that. A little more. Okay. Well, let's try this miracle tool out. Got all these different pieces, none of them line up, right? If you look at this, here's the mesh. None of these meshes line up. Maybe I want to turn this one down a little if I'm just looking at that. So how much time, was that going around there like that? Uniform, right? Take that, what if I take this to zero? No, I'll take that to two. It's a little better. Okay. This guy too, he's all... He's all cranked up here. Let's see. What do we got? See, a lot of the times I'm going to take this, I'll put it underneath the hypernerve after, you know? So this could be some pretty heavy subdivision. Although, the remesher may take care of that, to be honest with you. I'm, 
But I think I'll just take it down a little bit. So do 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 do. What do we got here? Natural. I don't know, like two. Going around a lot. Two. See how many are there. Cut that down here in this little cap thing. It's got three. Just make it like one. All right. Let's see what happens. Loving it. Loving it. Okay. Take this guy here. Grab the boolean. No, the connector. I think there's a connector. Let's see. Give it a shot here. I'm a little bit new to this. Usually I'd make put in the volume measure and have some huge polygon object, but here we go. Really psyched. Put all this underneath this connector. Can you put more than one object? It kind of gives me a clue when I'm looking at it in here, like if it worked. Well, that's kind of got to go up a little, huh? Is this doing its thing? I have no idea. Let me see if I look in to one of these holes here. No, I don't think it is doing its thing. Maybe a connector can only do two things. Let's see. Okay, you know what I think we need maybe we need to do? A Boolean union first. Boolean. Let's grab all this stuff, put it here. Now Boolean, I don't know if you can do more than one with that, but I think you can only do two with a Boolean. So, but is it working? To P is to be. Put that underneath the connector. Hmm. Yeah, just put it underneath the remesher and see what the heck happens. Where are you remesher? Right there. Save the scene. Boop. Now let me look at it here. Is it doing anything? Is it doing anything? Okay, this is my theory here is that a Boolean, you can only have two children. So, let's maybe take this in stages here. I want to connect this and this, right? So let me just pull this out of here. Oh, this out of here. I'm just going to grab two things at a time. I want this thing here and this thing here. Those two. Boom. Boolean. Union. Connect. Okay, that's working. Now, remesh. It did remesh it. Okay. Looks kind of like... Pretty bad though, but there's a couple of settings in here in the connector tolerance. There's the remesh tolerance. Mm. None of this, by the way, I really need to do, but it would give me kind of a cool bevel right here. So I was kind of thinking about it would be kind of cool. Um, let's see here. What's this guy at? Uniform 2. What's this guy at? 16. He's going around 16. And this guy's got less. What if he did 8? Um, four. Yeah. Hard to say, really. Where my where my setting is that it's gonna connect those together better. Yeah. Let's see what that looks like underneath the hibernator slider. Doesn't look horrible, but I don't really like it. So something's up with this. That's better. Still too many going around this guy. It's kind of nerding out on this year, but let's see. I don't want to pry. <laughs> well, whatever. Let's see. You know, the traditional way that I would have done it. It was with the volume builder there, so I could try that real quick. I'll just get rid of these for clarity here. Hit save. Now the volume builder likes to have every, everything really subdivided really 
highly. So let's see what happens. Dump all this underneath there. And it should try to plug it all together. You gotta turn the voxels down, so let's just divide by four. Whew, made the thing disappear up there. Let's try dividing by two. Huh, what the heck? Um let me see. Increase the subdivisions on this thing might help. See right here, natural. Bring that back up to eight. And this guy here, up to eight. And this guy here. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Oh, caps. Everything in the volume builder needs to be watertight. That's what it was with the caps. But still, you got to crank everything up. So see, like, the, the segments want to go to 122 on these things, for example. Uh, where's that one? Right here. Watch this. Boom. Now, I can look out in this other view. I don't have to get distracted by all that. Now, see, that's going around. I got that too low. Let's so bring that up to... Not so bad. See, then what this does is it gives you that nice little bevel between the two. It looks cool in the light. Um, my little guy here disappeared because everything's set too low, right? Hey. Oh, it's also because it doesn't have caps. That's, that's the main problem. Okay. So, there we go. Now, that gives me my little things there that I would like and I'm just gonna go in here and turn on this uh, smoother all right and go down to 50 maybe like that okay cool so that gives me a nice look that I need and then let's try throwing this underneath a remesher so doo -doo 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 -doo, remesher hit save just in case throw that right there then we can watch this thing go from a bad high poly to a you know look at that Okay, see this? It's horrible. You're horrible. Now this, click this magic miracle button, and boom. Okay, there's a little bit of oddity here and there on that, but overall, it's great. You know, it's everything great. So I'm gonna go ahead and current state this to an object, I think. I don't want that high poly. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, is that gonna be all right? You try. I think I could try to lower the polygon. So mesh density is a hundred here. Let's go down to fifty. Maybe that'll fix that little problem over there too. Let's go even lower. Let's go to five. Let's see what five does. Pretty extreme. Just check it out. I, mean, I could back it off after if I don't really like it. But hey, yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. Is everybody out there just jumping up and down? Are you excited, as excited as I am about this? <clears throat> it's great. This is going to go into any other program anybody else wants to use it in. It's super low poly. Video games, whatever. You want to open it in Maya, <coughs> dump your own textures on it. Boom. Good to go. All right. going to go ahead and current state this to an object. Now we just got that poly. And let's look at all these. Now my scale's off on it, so... Let me bring that up. Boom. It's got to sit in the bowl there. You can, you know, see this is scaling about the axis. The axis is important where it is. If I put it between here, it'll behoove my efforts to try to get this thing to fit. So I'm just going to drop that down. I'm only moving the axis, the point about which it moves, where it is, all that. But that does have an effect on the object because now it rotates from about this axis. And it also scales from about this axis. So as I'm trying to get it in here and line it up, this little ring down here is kind of like the telltale sign. Does it fit in here? So I can go like this. I can go, oh, there's a little bit there. Maybe just make it a little smaller. Like so. Now all this I can drop underneath a hypernerve too. I mean a subdivision surface like that. Boom. Looking real good. All right? Now this guy here is looking a little funky. We can increase his stuff. He's at 32. Let's go to 64. Okay. There we go. Looks good to me. Now what I'm going to do is texture the same render for you and we'll be off to the races. Okay, so we got this, 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 and this. I always do that. You know, it's right next to the material button. Like a thousand times I'll go, Arr! materials, whoops. 
uh, and then you, that's the worst thing you can do too. Ah, uh, okay, I gotta go back. Ba, 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 get back to here, uh, uh, and then hit that little magic orb. Then bring your materials up right here. So I want to go up here to the asset browser, stand on the shoulder of giants, and grab some awesome textures that Cinema 4D provides you with. Uh, I'm gonna search glass. And you know, you can do this one of two ways. You can look at the glasses here, blah, blah, blah. You can look at the material. Sometimes I wonder if all the materials that are in everything are everywhere here, but not quite sure. So there's a regular glass one I like right here. It's a simple glass right there. So I think I'll start with that. And I know that the bottom one's just the simple glass, right? But the top one's kind of got red in it. So I could look back there, actually, there might have been another one. If I look glass that um, was reddish. Let's see, and it was this one, red glass. So I might as well use that. So I'll take the red glass, put it on here. And then this is like a car paint, kind of, you know? So I'm just gonna go up here, look up car paint. There's a nice red one there. Mm, I might look up plastic. Yeah, see, like that. Like I like that a little bit better. I think. Let's go in here, change the color of it to that red. I might as well just sample, sample that red right there. Okay, and dump that on that. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take all this, group it. Let's give it a name. Hummingbird Feeder. I'll save my scene, I'm gonna go find, uh, if you just click standard there, it'll pop everything back to like your default. I'm gonna go find a uh, scene, let's see. Finger ring, finger ring. Let's take a look at this, boom. Okay. Nice. Now, let's see, did I this have my new render settings? So I did something and had some horrible render setting. Um, let me just see how fast this one renders. Okay, yeah, this is going quick. We're good, we're good. Get rid of that. And go here. Copy. Here, we'll move it over here. We'll make an instance. I'll make this a render instance. I'm just going like this. And then we'll get a little rotation. Check it out from a different angle. Alrighty. Double check my render settings here. Physical, but good to go. Let's see what it looks like. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any ideas for a 3D model, uh, let me know in the description. I'll try and make it for you. You can purchase this model on Turbo Squid. I'll put the link in the description uh, pretty soon after I, after I update it. So the top glass looks a little bit kind of dark. Um, you know, it looks way more solid red when I'm looking at it, just in the real world or whatever. So let's see if I can force that. There's two ways I could go about it. I can try to, um, sometimes just doing a luminance channel of a color might help. But let's see, we can do a render region as well while you're while you're working or an interactive render region like this. The setting in the in this sort of a fast speed setting right there. If you turn this down, it'll go even faster. That's why it looks a little low res. And then um, so I can play around with this. Let's see, the luminous thing didn't really work out. So transparency. How transparent is the object? Um, reflectance. Okay, it's definitely something to do with this. Absorption distance. Yeah, I might be able to try to just knock it out to a different one. No. Just experimenting here, seeing if I get get lucky. Um, no, 
open up them. So, you know, after a little bit here, I might kind of give up and I would say, um, edit this guy. So I take this guy here, copy, paste him, and then delete this. And then this new one here, I would drag and drop onto that. All right, did that update? No. Drag and drop that onto that. Okay, hang on, let me just see this. Oh, it does look like it's going on the backdrop. So let me just find this option. The interactive render region is a little annoying when you're trying to do something like this, so let me shut that off. Oh, that's, that's the instance. That was my problem. I kept drop, dropping on the instance. You can't do that. you got to go to the source model. Um, where are you? There we go. Get rid of that guy. Okay, so now this should work. Put that interactive render region back on. I can see what I'm doing. Now I'll go in here and try to just maybe add a color to this one. Let's see if it starts to get the look that I want. Yeah, see that's more like what the, the hummingbird feeder is like. And then it's almost like it's less transparent. Is that gonna make it more solid? Let's see if that does it make it a little darker. I'm a little better at the 3D modeling than um, playing around with materials and textures, so I kind of, a lot of time, will just drag and drop stuff, but, you know, if you fiddle around with it long enough, you should be able to kind of get what you're looking for. Well, let's see. It's a little too dark. And now when I do it, yeah, now it's going to go more solid. So I just had to add that little luminance. You could probably do the same thing with just adding color. You don't have to quite use the luminance, perhaps, and there might be won't be so uh, like the the luminance channel kind of gets rid of shadow, the effect of shadows if it's cranked, and it doesn't like like the lighting. Yeah, so this is looking pretty cool. Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar right there. Okay, good to go. So let's just render the whole shot now. Yeah, I think very often, you know, people are going to bring this into the program they're using. None of these materials are going to work anyway because these only work in Cinema 4D. So, but the base models there, they can just drag and drop their own materials. Every program will have its own way to do all of these different kind of materials that you're seeing here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Coffee's almost done. Oh. That means the show's almost over. Don't cry. We'll be back tomorrow. If you want to support the show, you could go purchase this on Turbo Squid 100 times. That'd be 100 times 20 bucks. My phone will go, D -d dang, sold the hummingbird feeder. D -d -d dang, sold it. I say, oh my. Somebody who's watching the show must have bought these 20 hummingbird feeders. Okay, look at that. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you get to use this in one of your projects, and I hope you learned how to 3D model with this hummingbird uh, example. Hummingbird feeder example. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.